Hello everyone and welcome back to another sewing vlog. It's been a while since my last sewing video but I'm finally able to work on my backlog from a while ago. So this one was way long overdue. In this project I'll be going through on how I made saw this from Fire Emblem 3 Houses for one of my commission. Flashback. Alright so here we have the reference pictures that I've collected over the past weeks trying to figure out how to assemble this outfit together. Uh, I don't know where to begin. I'm gonna have to probably play around. Right now the main thing I'm trying to do is figure out the main dress, how the top cut works and how it connects to the bottom and then the train and so on. So I think for now I'm gonna start off by just playing around with the pattern on my mannequin and figure out the shapes and cut from there. The major part that I'm really trying to figure out is the connection between the waist and the hip area because I think it's gonna have to be a two-piece or one. I That's what I'm trying to figure out. I was looking at reference at other cosplayer and they all did like a two-piece where the bottom is uh, detachable from the top so I'm gonna have to play around and I'll see which one works better. So it's been a couple hours and I finally uh, finalized what I want to do for this pattern and in the end I chose functionality over accuracy and I'm pretty sure my client would uh, uh, agree the same way because I think they would want to find ways to wear this outfit and make it so complex that you have to like find your ways to put it through like a puzzle and I don't think they want to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finalize it and cut it out and see how it looks on mock-up. After the mock-up, I went and traced out the final pattern and cut out everything on the main fabric. I'm using a type of sateen that has a nice smooth sheen surface and some stretches to it which help shape the front bodice really well. I also got these gold ropes here for the trim and roping part of the dress. A few inches later. So I just had the the gold rope trim go goat gold rope uh, trim basically just attached on. They're not permanently in there yet because I'm debating either I want to spend time hand sewing them in there by sewing in the crevice in of the seams or uh, attach it with uh, glue. And then over here we have the pattern that I just uh, roughly made for the upper bustle part. I did a quick mock-up of it and it looks good so I cut it out. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the pieces and add the trim lines along. That's actually going to take me a while because I'm actually going to cut the trim out that I have here and basically sew it along the way. Um, wiener later. Alright, so a little update since I last worked on this. I pinched in the center to make it a little fitted more so that there's going to be like these, uh, the bra, like um, outlet bralette, like black pizza thingy that goes on the outside, like a little, like a micro bikini thing. Uh, you'll you'll see later, but it's just kind of there as a separate piece. And for the collar, so I ended up using E6000 on the tr the rope that I actually. So I sewed like a one fourth or one six. I think it's one eighth, one eighth, so that there's like still like a little gap inside this between the seams, so that I p carefully place the glue alignment in there so I can just stick the rope in. I'm really glad that this rope actually was the perfect size to fit, so I'm going to probably use this throughout the whole entire costume. Uh, hopefully I have enough, but yeah, uh, it looks good, it works out. The glue is flexible when it dries, so there's no crustiness or, you know, crunch to it. And probably going to do like a little hook and eye closure for this, like kind of like um, you know, a collar or a bra style. Uh, yeah, same for like these other parts that I need to add like closure to as well. So right now I'm going to work on the skirt portion, which is like there's going to be like a bustle, kind of like an outer skirt for the upper, and then there's going to be like a long one. And I have to work on the design for that because there's like meticulous design going on on that outfit. And I'll work on the shibari rope thingy my bob uh, last because uh, those are the ones I kind of don't want to touch right now until I have at least majority of the outfit in. So yeah, let's get to that. So I also pretty much winged the entire design portion, bottom for the dress, skirt thing. It worked out. And so far the measurement worked. I sometimes just me eyeing, eyeballing the thing make it actually easier than spending so much time measuring it like, you know, centimeter by centimeter, making sure everything is like exactly matching. And it just ended up like not working out sometimes because yeah, yeah, you know those things but yeah it uh so far what i've whatever i'm doing kind of works so hopefully once i 
transfer it onto the actual back of the skirt train, uh, it'll still stay like that. Alright, so I'm working on the top portion of the skirt thing I'm about right now. And originally I was gonna use like the these trim right here for the fringes, but that's a lot to cut out. That's a lot because these are like one less than one fourth of an inch. They're like one eighth, yeah. And no, I don't feel like doing a whole row of that. So I got ribbons instead, so we're gonna go ahead and do that all around this and then gather it and that'll be the the top part and then I'm working on the bottom part now which these are going to be used for the design and sewn on instead. Later. So I just finished sewing on all the tassel part that I made completely out of the ribbon strip. Uh, it actually didn't take too long. I mostly just have to snip them all out and uh, burnt the edges just so that it doesn't fray. And now it looks like the tassel on the bottom of the fringe. And what I'm working on next is the bottom skirt, which, uh, skirt, skirt, which is uh, probably going to take a bit because uh, I did the... I also got the template for the designs on where the trim's gonna be. I just have to uh, draw on the chalk marks so I know where to start sewing the trim and the placement. So this is probably gonna take me a bit as well because it's actually a lot of trims going from one end to the other. And then there's still like another design I have to put on after, so the skirt's gonna be a big one for now. A little later. Alright, so I've just finished um, gathering up the bustle wrap part for the outer layer and I just need to put on the waistband but I can't do that until I attached it to this skirt which is going to be the, um, the train portion for the underneath this. And I actually really like the fringes of the ribbon. I actually thought it was going to uh, look kind of cheap because it's a ribbon but the ribbon I got is a double sided uh, satin so it actually looks really nice and yeah I like the look of it so far. Now I thought this part wasn't going to be as bad but lordy it took me so long. Many unbearable hours later. Well, let's not do this again, even though I still have like the bottom row to do, but yeah, um, I still need to add on the centerpiece for each of the flower thing and then the ruffles, which I don't have enough fabric for because you know, 10 yards isn't enough, but hopefully uh, the fabrics are still there. All right, so this took quite a while. Um, it's actually like an, an entire day if I just sit there, but I had to have the breaks in between. But yeah, I finished an entire uh, 12 episode anime while sewing all this because it's about an episode uh, per strip. And I think each episode was about like 23 minutes. So yeah, and I made about 10. Uh, so uh, yeah, here they are. They're all finished. That's a lot. It's actually quite a lot. I actually really like the texture of it. It's like um. A little fabric uh, print I made with these, uh, with the, the trim that I cut. I'm surprised I had enough because I thought I didn't have enough. But uh, yeah, so now next up is to sew them together, attach the, the under part to it, and then fold it and then gather it and attach it to the train of the dress. After making the trims, I went ahead and gathered them together to make the ruffles to add to the bottom of the dress. This took a while, but I love how much it looks after. Alright, so some massive updates on the dress because it's been a week and I've been working on it straight, so I've uh, I've been concentrating on it and I don't think I stopped to really do much uh, process shot or filming aside from gathering the bottom tier ruffle you see right here, you know, all that hard work and labor I spent sewing on the trim just to gather and add it on the final finishing touch of this train. But yeah, it's all done. Or at least the train part, not the whole dress I wish. But yeah, so it's all completed. I attached the outer skirt bustle here onto the um, this long dress train right here onto a waistband. It's actually quite heavy, but it'll be detachable from the front with a, a lot of Velcro. 
so yeah so there's that it just took a really long time from attaching on all the trims and then uh, carefully doing all the gathers uh, this was what took the longest the bottom ruffles but I'm glad it's all done I actually like it, it looks really nice uh, especially when it's all out like a train so yeah and that's my progress so far for her I am just waiting on the 3d printed part because I need to work on some of the ropings and that for the front center I think um, what I'm gonna do next is some minor parts which is doing the attachment and closure so like hooks in the eye and I need like velcro for for some of these parts right here and then i'll probably work on that weird black bralette that's that goes in the front next aside from figuring out how to make this outfit functionality and comfort is also pretty important because you gotta get into the cosplay somehow Later. So I made a bra thing for so this on the outer dress of hers. It looks like a micro bikini because it's actually pretty small. But I basically just uh, drafted the, um, the pattern piece onto the front chest, cut that out, make a paper version, do another uh, mock-up to make sure it fits, and then I cut it out on the final black fabric piece right here. It's a little slippery, so it's going to have a hard time staying on, so I'll probably either add like um, those... Uh, um, those silicone grip thing to so it can like stick on or I'll probably just add like tiny snaps just so it stays in place mostly because the dress fabric is already uh, slippery itself and then um, this it's the same fabric so it's also slippery so together like it just won't stay on by itself especially if it's like a strapless kind of bra style and there's no strap and I debated if I wanted to add an invisible bra strap to it but I uh, don't it'll show awkwardly because um this is the main outfit already but i'll see how it is if it doesn't work then i'll add a strap as an option but so far uh yeah this is all i have for the front here of her dress next up i worked on her armband this part i tried my best to replicate what the reference looks like which was a triangular band with fringes and some braided details i made it so that they can just slip on and off the arm then onto the red and white ribbon, which were pretty easy and attached with velcro around the wrist. 3,000 years later. So I finally got the 3D printed parts for sew this accessory pieces, and I can't thank uh, I Cosplay and Sandy enough for doing and making this for me. I was actually having a panic because of the original uh, place that I got from didn't work out, and it really costed me like a lot of time waiting on it but you know like uh, it was my fault I should have checked on it but it, yeah but anyway so she managed to print it for me it's made out of resin it's so nice I love the details on it it's literally like hard as a brick I love it <laughs> it's um the detailing on it's super nice so all I have to do right now is go ahead and paint it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so I can start attaching all the outer pieces I thought spray painting these wouldn't take too long, but lo and behold, it was raining all week and the temperature was so cold, it was slowing down the drying process so much. Four to six days later. So some progress update on Sodis. I got the two ribbon bracelet that hangs around her arm, her arm, her um, her wrist done, and her armband on both sides. Uh, it's just slip on and off, so uh, those were pretty easy. And right now I'm just waiting for the 3D um, printed parts to be finished, which is to dry up, and that's actually taking about almost a week, mostly because it's cold, really cold, and it's raining, so it's taking twice as long for everything to dry and it's kind of a thick layer of coating of paint that I had to do and now I'm just waiting on the um, the outer protective coat to dry and after that I can start figuring out how to tie and start work because without those I can't really um, put the placement of the rope yet so but while I'm waiting for those I'm probably gonna go ahead and play around and work on the the shape and the placement of parts that I can do for now for the ropes one eternity later. So most of my time is spending towards trying to figure out how to put the harness and these rope going on because I have to find a, a way to tie the support of the accessory part, especially the main plate there. Uh, it goes in the center of under bust and yeah, I have to figure out a way so that it doesn't like the weight is evenly distributed out so the rope has to go towards that. So right now I'm figuring out the back piece right now because there's going to be like a piece here. Uh, it's going to connect. Everything's going to connect somehow. So I had to figure out uh, how to do that right now. 
After having all the accessories dry from the paint, I rubbed on some acetone in areas to strip off the paint and or the glue snaps because otherwise the paint layer will peel off from the glue. So I need the snaps to directly be on the backing of the accessories. Then I attached all the other gold fringes and made loops for the rope. So far uh, it's looking good. It might look a little tango and weird going on, but uh, I figure out mostly how the rope's gonna go. Uh, it's, I'm still hmm, on, on how I'm doing it, but it's clean. I'm sewing snaps onto uh, certain parts just so that I can uh, you know, have support and this plate thing is, is probably the heaviest piece in the center and I did like a little hooks just to have um have here. They're actually detachable so let's make it easier. I don't want to permanently uh you know have this thing attached on. That's gonna be a hassle to take on and off. So right now I'm working on the back piece and I have this here which goes here. It's gonna be actually like the main part that actually connects most of it. So it has to, it's gonna be holding up the neck, it's gonna be holding up uh, the center bus area and then I have to find ways to connect that plate the rest of them onto the shoulder parts because it's like wrapped around her arms mostly but yeah I really uh, I'm glad I have the idea of like doing them snaps because I can just glue on the snaps on the pieces here and then for the ropes I can just actually sew them on so glad I figured that out many tic tacs later so all of this here actually is more complex than it looks. It actually took a bit to figure out and how to wire everything together. It looks really nice right now. And then on the inside, it is literally just full of closures and snaps and hooks because all the harness in the front connects to this center back piece. So I did change the design just a little bit just to make it more functional and easier only because I don't think my friend would want to have like multi thing going on the back. So I think having like one back piece, which is the support to hold everything together Will be much easier so I did change that part and so originally there was actually like another centerpiece right here which is just this part right here but I decided to combine it just to make it one just so that it's like much easier and I don't think they want like a whole tie thing going on especially um, them so this has like a really long wig as well so they already have a lot going on so I don't think they want any more than that and here's the front so far I'm waiting for the um, the centerpiece rope and the other closures for this uh, the plate right here to dry and after that I can uh, hook it on I made majority of this detachable so it's actually easy to get in and out they just have to uh, remember uh, which direction it goes I'm gonna have to provide some instruction for that so that they know which order to loop everything to and then just like a few more like accessory like on the side of the arm and after that I can just wrap up the leg and the, the headdress crown and that will be it. For the double rope part, I carefully E6000 glued two ropes together in order to make it a double. Hand sewing together works as well but this was just the faster method for me. Alright, so I am finally done with this shibari shenanigan that's going on. We saw this here. It's it's a lot going on. It looks kind of weird without her whole train dress. It really looks like a shibari tie. But I'm going to try my best to explain what I did because uh, it was a lot of, like figuring out and basically testing it out. But uh, in the end, it worked and I, uh, yeah, I said I figured out method. So uh, we're going to start from the back piece. This is the main back piece that is basically the, um, the structure that holds all of us together. So uh, there's like a lot of closure. There's actually snaps and those lobster hook. So the first strap, which is like the neck part, wait, part the neck part right here so it, um, it goes to the snap and then they snap together and then you go ahead and slap this on so it connects to this to this and then we have the second rope which is this one right here that goes like around the the arm so these two basically goes around the arm actually one goes under the armpit and then one goes around the arm so and then it also loops and connects to here as well and the center plate over here this one this is also detachable it has um, a lobster hook so actually yeah they actually they're all detachable you can either take off the plate itself or just um, take it off right here. So, yeah, I made it all detachable. You get the three loops here. I'm probably going to have to do a little video explanation for my friend who's wearing this just so that um, they're going to need help putting it on because the, the person, whoever's helping, has to attach everything from the back and you have to do it like on the right order. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. But yeah, um, once they wear it, it'll, it'll fit better. This is actually supposed to like hang up here more, but that's because then the arm, there's no arm right now, so it can't really like tug on it. But once um, it's worn with the full circumference of the arm, this would raise higher and everything 
should look according to how I plan it. And uh, for the tying, I did like a few methods. Um, I either like tie it off like as a knot, or I use like um, um the same rope trim that I did for the skirt. I use that to wrap it around and use that as a tie because um, I'm afraid tying this alone with like it's too slippery, so it won't like hold. So I have to use like smaller ropes to tie on the thicker rope. And to seal it off, I do, I use some um, super glue. It actually hardens the edge so that it doesn't come apart. So let me see if I can find an example here. Yeah, like that. I like that. The focus. Yeah, so um, that's what I used to seal finish it off. I basically tie it one side and then tie it again the other side until like it becomes like this cord like this. So I don't know if that makes sense or not, but uh, maybe I'll do like an example of that as well. And I threw these on because she has like two of these. And I also sealed some like the edges with like ribbons and such because uh, once you cut it, the rope, the big one, will unravel. So what I usually have to do is like put like a small clear tape so when I cut it, it doesn't unravel. And then I seal it off with like a ribbon or some sort like the ones over here. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I did for um, her whole tie thing going on. I hopefully that makes sense. You can see like how I seal off like some ropes edges and stuff and all the lobster hooks and like snaps going on that in here so I'm working on the foot accessory right now and then I just have to work on the head one and this will be done and it's actually like a week just before the con so I'll get this to them just in time one pair of pants later Alright, so I got the leg accessory part for the ankle all finished. The closure is going to be snapped for the back here. So just did it all rope, so it's pretty simple, easy to wear. The little jewels on the bottom. And all I have left is to work on the head accessories and attach um, some last couple of stuff on the back of the skirt. And yeah, we'll be done. And over here we have the headdress for Sodis. Sodis, Sodis. I've been calling her Sodis. I'm pretty sure it's like Sodis. But yeah, so I actually had to use um, a base wig of mine so that I can work on something because I actually don't have the wig wigs for her that uh, this crown will be going on. So yeah, I had a wig that's similar that I uh, I basically just used for my base, so I know where uh, everything goes because the um, the pearl. The beading of a gold uh, pearl will be wrapped around the ponytail. So it basically goes under or they can just clip it on. And then you see the back here, there's like the tassel, a middle tassel over here and the center goes over here. Hopefully it fits. If it doesn't, um, it's easy to adjust. They, um, we can just like fix it. But yeah, so um, here we have the headdress. Everything's all done. Just mostly just a bunch of tassel glued on everything else. And yeah, easy to put on hopefully. Finally, I can attach all the remaining accessories onto the dress. Eventually. Alrighty, so Sawdust is all completely finished and she is ready to go. Uh, this project was something, it was like a two, three months of um, fumbling around and figuring out how everything fit together. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, gold trim barfing and a lot of shibari tying nonsense, but here she is uh, looking great. My favorite part of all this is actually the back detail right here because you actually won't be able to see much of it later once uh, they wear it because her wig is actually like pretty big. It's going to cover most of the back detail, so I just want to like appreciate all these uh, small little things that are out of arm right now but yeah she's um she's done so that's a wrap up for this it's actually a couple of days before i'm supposed to hand it off so made it just in time so some just a little thing about the back and most of the accessory right here are detachable with snaps just to make it easier to travel with and store thank you so much iCosplay Insanity for making it in for me like last minute uh, really thankful for that because uh, that was also chaotic to deal with uh, the shibari tie rope shenanigan here they're all detachable as well mostly with uh, lobster hooks and snaps so this is like I mentioned before this is the, the main attachment the main piece that holds everything together uh, neck 
like is Hook and Eye, uh, Velcro, um, outlet bra for some reason, uh, and also um, Velcro for uh, the top right here of this blue bar, and the skirt's also Velcro and detachable. So, and then the train here. But yeah, uh, that's a wrap up for her. There's actually some other accessories that I made for her that's not here right now, but I'll include that in a bit. But you know, little accessories such as like this arm piece right here, and there's gonna be like the crown, and there's like the ankle bracelet, and she has like actually a lot of uh, accessory, but I, I got those in. So yeah, that's a wrap up for this project. And that's a wrap for this cosplay. This outfit altogether was actually pretty challenging because it had me looping around the design, no pun intended. Honestly, I probably wouldn't remember how I did the rope since most of it was as I go along and it ended up working for me. I don't often say this, but I feel like this is one of those cosplay I don't know if I want to make again because it was so tedious. What made this easy was that my friend was able to come for fitting, so it made it easier to work around that. Overall, I had a good experience making this and just picking up more technique as I go. That's probably my favorite part in sewing and crafting is that no matter how long I've been doing this, I'm always learning new tricks and techniques. We were able to do a shoot for this cosplay so I was able to come along and take some videos of it. Everything looks amazing on my friend Kazuha and it was a pleasure to make her this commission. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching if you made it to the end. I really love making cosplay vlogs and they do take a while to put together so I appreciate all the support here. With that, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!